Hello hockey fans and welcome back to another video. Like any sport, losing is a pretty common occurrence in the National Hockey League. Whether you're lifting the President's Trophy as the best team in the league, or you're on pace to receive a lottery pick in the draft, every team will have lost their fair share of matches during a gruelling 82 game season. Though every franchise has an equal opportunity to compete for the cup, not everyone puts themselves in the best position to succeed. Whether it's through poor roster decisions, a myriad of injuries, or just bad luck, some teams have the odds of success stacked so far against them that they try to build a well-oiled machine with parts that are outdated or falling apart around them. No one knows these circumstances better than the league's many expansion teams, who had to build an NHL calibre roster from scratch with limited resources at their disposal, before going up against the league's already established, more successful organisations and pray that they could come away with a win instead of being blown out on the scoreboard or just downright embarrassed. However, of all the NHL teams that have disappointed, underachieved or were just plain terrible, none of them have ever been quite as awful as these guys. This is the story of the 1974-75 Washington Capitals, the worst team in NHL history. Before we begin, I just want to mention that over 80% of you who have watched my videos this month have not subscribed to my channel, so if you do enjoy this video and you want to see more videos like it in the future, consider hitting that subscribe button, it would really help me out a lot folks. But anyway, on with the video. In order to tell this record-breaking tale, allow me to take you back to July 8th, 1972, when the National Hockey League announced that they had awarded NBA owner Abe Pollin an expansion franchise in the league, which would begin play in the city of Washington, D.C. during the 1974-75 NHL season. Pollin was very happy to add another sports franchise to his collection, as he had recently built the brand new Capital Center Arena just outside of the city in order to house both the NBA's Washington Bullets and his new Capitals team for the foreseeable future. To ensure the Capitals began their tenure in the league on the right foot, Pollin's debut act as owner of the team was to hire Hall of Fame player Milt Schmidt to serve as the team's first general manager. Though he was most famously known as a member of the Boston Bruins Kraut line during the 30s and 40s, where he helped the team win two Stanley Cups as a player, Schmidt had also led the Bruins to another pair of cup wins in the early 70s as the general manager of the organisation. By hiring Schmidt, Pollin felt that he was establishing a strong foundation for his franchise by hiring someone that had proven he could trade for the right players, draft future superstars, and be the architect of a successful and competitive roster in the current NHL. After being awarded their franchise by the league, roughly two years later, on June 12th, 1974, both the Capitals and the league's other expansion team that year, the Kansas City Scouts, took part in the 1974 expansion draft, where each of the two teams picked players from existing NHL teams to form the foundations of their very first NHL roster. In this draft, the Capitals were able to add such players as Maple Leafs forward Dennis Dupair, Penguins defenseman Yvonne Lab, and Leafs goaltender Ron Lowe to their roster, all of whom would become key players for Washington during its inaugural season. These expansion picks would go nicely alongside high-value prospects Greg Jolly and Mike Marson, who the Capitals selected 1st and 19th overall respectively during the 1974 amateur draft a few weeks prior. Though they would acquire some decent NHL players and some promising prospects, the landscape of the hockey world at the time certainly meant that the Capitals had their work cut out for them. With the NHL consisting of 16 teams during the prior 73-74 season, and with their rival league, the World Hockey Association, housing 14 teams themselves, there were already 30 professional hockey teams based in North America alone. This demand for players across the two pro leagues meant that the pool of professional hockey talent was stretched incredibly thin, so when another two NHL teams were added, the problem became even worse especially when you consider that European players made up a tiny percentage of North American rosters at the time. Though the Capitals did add a few decent free agents, like Tommy Williams and Doug Moens to help bolster their roster, 
The lack of talent available meant that Washington were forced to push many of their top draft picks straight into the NHL and fill out the rest of their roster with players who were either journeymen of the league practically on their way out or skaters who had little to no professional hockey experience. Nevertheless, the Capitals were able to put a roster together and were ready to begin their journey in the NHL. On October 9th, 1974, the Washington Capitals took to the ice in their franchise's first NHL game, as they visited Madison Square Garden to take on the New York Rangers. Unfortunately for the Capitals though, they would be unable to get their first win in franchise history too, as they would lose the game by a score of 6-3. Jim Harisiuk scored the franchise's first ever goal at 5.06 into the first period, whilst their number one draft pick, Greg Jolly, registered the first assist and point of his career on the team's second goal of the night. Though they didn't get their season off to a perfect start, there was still plenty to be excited about in DC. Sure, they may not have won their first game, but a new team competing against 60-year-old franchises with rosters full of experienced NHL players was always going to be an uphill battle. Unfortunately for the Capitals though, they didn't quite seem to realise just how tough it would really be. A week after playing their first NHL game, Washington would record their first win in franchise history thanks to a 4-3 victory against the Chicago Blackhawks on October 17th. However, this high would soon be followed by a string of crushing lows, as the Capitals would have to wait over a month before they registered their second win of the season, going 0-13-1 in the games between. A 6-4 win against the California Golden Seals on November 19th would again be followed by another long winless streak, as Washington posted an 0-9-2 record in their next 11 games before earning their third win against the Toronto Maple Leafs on December 16th. After that, the Capitals would finish the year 1974 with a six-game losing streak, meaning they entered the new year with a record of three wins, 30 losses, and four ties. Capitals head coach Jim Anderson allegedly stated, quote, I'd rather find out my wife was cheating on me than keep losing like this. At least I could tell my wife to cut it out. If he thought things were bad already though, oh boy was he in for a rough ride. As Washington moved into the second half of the 74-75 season, things would go from terrible to just downright embarrassing, as the Capitals would continue to average just a single win in every month of the league's calendar. They were able to win two games in a single week though, on the 11th and 16th of February, but this bright spot would immediately be followed by an NHL record 17 game losing streak between February 18th and March 26th. Things got so bad that the Capitals went through three different head coaches that season alone, finishing with general manager Milt Schmidt taking the reins late in the season and posting a 2-6-0 record in eight games. On April 6th, 1975, the Washington Capitals played the 80th and final game of their inaugural 74-75 NHL season, concluding their debut year with an 8-4 victory over the Pittsburgh Penguins. When the final buzzer sounded and their season was finally over, the Capitals finished the year with a record of 8-67-5. Eight, 8 wins, 67 losses, and 5 ties in 80 games. In doing so, this record placed the Capitals rock bottom in the league standings and cemented them as the lowest winning team in NHL history to have played at least 70 games, surpassing the previous holders, the 1972-73 New York Islanders, who went 12-60-2. Not only that, but Washington was so deep at the bottom of the standings that they were 20 points below the next worst team in the league. Washington only got 21 points on the whole year. And who was the next worst team in the league? None other than the Kansas City Scouts, of course. Sure, their inaugural season sucked pretty hard too, but they were able to win 15 games and had double the points that the Capitals did, so they deserve a little credit at least. These two expansion teams ended up playing so poorly in their first year that some members of the NHL began to worry that adding them to the league had been a mistake. 
when your fellow players and front office members who saw a direct benefit in their individual stats and their season record when they played you start to regret you joining their league, you know you've made a horrible first impression. Washington's record in their debut season may be bad enough to look at, but the numbers underneath it are enough to make any hockey fan sick to their stomach. During this abysmal year, the Capitals went on a losing streak of at least seven games or more on five different occasions, had a road record of 1-39-0, with an NHL record 37-game losing streak on the road, and finished with a goal difference of minus 265, having scored just 181 goals to the 446 they conceded. Oh, and if that wasn't bad enough, the road record, the goals difference, and the goals conceded are all NHL records too. What a team, eh folks? But what about the players on the roster? Surely there were some diamonds in the rough, right? Well, yes, there were a few diamonds, but let's just say that they were hidden far, far below a lot of rough. Free agent signing Tom Williams led the team in scoring with 22 goals and 58 points in 73 games, Yvonne Lab was the team's top scoring blue liner, with 4 goals and 27 points in 76 games, whilst Ron Lowe was the team's best netminder, with an 8 36 and 2 record, a 5.45 goals against average, and one shutout in 48 games. The Capitals ended up using three different goaltenders that season, yet Lowe was the one who recorded all eight of the team's wins. Netminders John Adams and Michelle Belhumer played so poorly in net and had their team play so badly in front of them that they were both unable to get a single win in over 30 games combined. Yeah, this team sucked hard. Oh, but we're not done there. Of the Capitals' four highest draft picks in the 1974 amateur draft, three of them ended up playing on the team that year. Each member of this trio suited up in at least 39 NHL games, but only one of them was able to score more than 10 points, that being Mike Marson, who had 28 points in 78 games. Also, Yvonne Lab recorded the most penalty minutes with 182, whilst defenseman Bill Mickelson posted the worst plus-minus on the team with minus 82 in just 59 games. With a stat like that, you can see why he didn't play the entire 80-game season. He might have reached triple digits! As you've probably figured out by now, the Capitals' 67-loss season was nowhere near enough to help them reach the playoffs, so the team had to find a way to climb out of the grave that they had dug, dust themselves off, and come back much stronger in their sophomore year. Following this record-setting season, the Capitals would continue to struggle in the National Hockey League for quite a while, as they would spend much of the next decade either coming super close to the playoffs, but ultimately miss out in the final weeks of the season, or sit at the bottom of their division and the league standings. In the seven seasons after their debut, Washington would post an under 500 record every year and be unable to make the playoffs even once. However, after a few changes to the team's front office during the mid to late 80s, the tide would begin to turn for the Capitals. Some expert wheeling and dealing by Washington's second and third general managers, Max McNabb and David Poyle, helped the team build a strong foundation and acquire a number of standout players of the 80s and 90s, such as Mike Gartner, Bobby Carpenter, Rod Langway, Scott Stevens, Dale Hunter and Peter Bondra. This group of league superstars and future Hall of Famers would help the Capitals shift from basement dweller to consistent cup contender, helping the franchise to make 14 straight playoff appearances between 1983 and 1996. Unfortunately though, this streak wouldn't result in any silverware, as Washington only ever made it as far as the second round before being eliminated. The franchise was able to make their first appearance in the Stanley Cup Finals in 1998, thanks to some heroics from Peter Bondra and Adam Oates, but they were swept in the finals by the powerhouse Detroit Red Wings. This obviously wasn't great for them, but better to make it there and lose it than never make it at all, right guys? 
Then, on May 12th, 1999, Capitals owner Abe Pollin, the man who had brought the franchise into existence 25 years ago, and who had stuck by the team through both its dreadful beginnings and its recent success, announced that he had sold the Capitals franchise and a minority interest in Washington sports and entertainment to current Capitals owner Ted Leonsis. Since the dawn of the current century and the Leonsis era in Washington, the Capitals have really turned things around and earned a reputation as one of the top teams in the league, with such stars as Olaf Kolzig, Yaramir Yaga, Sergei Gonchar, John Carlson, Nicholas Backstrom, and Alexander Ovechkin having suited up for the franchise. This influx of primarily European talent has helped the team make an appearance in the playoffs 14 times in the last 20 years. Despite being a mainstay in the postseason though, the Capitals just couldn't build the perfect cup winning roster or find a way to finally get over the hump, as they were eliminated from the playoffs year after year. That is, until 2018. On June 7th, 2018, almost 34 years after entering the league, the Washington Capitals defeated the NHL's newest expansion team, the Vegas Golden Knights, in five games in the Stanley Cup Finals to clinch their first championship in franchise history. After rising up from humble beginnings, after years of being good but not good enough, the Capitals were finally on top of the hockey world. The team had proven themselves good enough to be recognised as champions, and longtime captain Alexander Ovechkin, who had won practically every other award a goal-scoring physical winger could, finally got his and his franchise's long-awaited chance to get their hands on the cup. Though it certainly wasn't the first impression that they were hoping to make, thanks to the era in which they joined the league and the lack of pro talent available, the 1974-75 Washington Capitals were able to add their team next to several records in the hockey history books albeit for all the wrong reasons. With the way that the league is organised today, I find it hard to believe that this record will be broken anytime soon, although it's certainly not impossible and crazier things have happened. That said, it would take a uniquely special kind of terrible to win less than 8 games over an entire season. They may not have been great, they may not have been good, they may not have even been mediocre, but in their debut year in the NHL, the Capitals sure were a team to remember. And that's the story of the worst team in NHL history. What do you guys think about the 1974-75 Washington Capitals? Do you think their record will be broken one day? Perhaps even by the Seattle franchise soon to enter the league? Let me know in the comments below, I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye! A big thank you to Antti Hananen, Chris Gadsby, Connor B, Jordan Whitehead, Paul Malia, Roman from London, The Legacy, and Worthless Pieces, as well as a huge thank you to Max Artis for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further, and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.